Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 14. Hey, if you want to download this workbook file and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our last video for Chapter 2. And we're going to talk about the VLOOKUP function. And I have some notes up here that you can read later. Here's the problem. You have this data set, and there's the revenue whole column here. But your boss has asked you to create a cross tabulation table where we count the revenue in certain categories based on the region. Well, wait a second. How, how am I going to do that? This is the table that I dump into the pivot table. I don't see region. Here's what the boss did. And lots of data, in fact, almost all data in databases is stored this way. Here's sales rep. We're given this lookup table over here. For each sales rep, there's the region. Here's how you'd have to do it if you did it by hand. You'd actually have to, for this cell, look up Rachel Gomez, race through the first column of this table. And when you find Rachel Gomez, you would jump over to the second column of this table, which is region, look and see that it's west, come back to the cell and type west. Enter. Now you'd have to look up Isabel Cross. Go over to the table, race through the first column of the table, find a match for Isabel Cross, jump over to the second column, region, get Midwest, bring it back over here and say Midwest. Now, why am I belaboring the method of doing this by hand? Because we're going to learn a new function, VLOOKUP. And it's one of the top five functions used on the planet Earth. That's why in this statistical analysis class, you got to learn it. And not only that, but this situation where we have one table and a key table here, or a lookup table where we need to get region and bring it back here to add a new field to our table is incredibly common. In fact, most of you, when you go out for your job interview, if they have an Excel interview, they'll ask you what the VLOOKUP function does. So let's do it one more time by hand, and then we'll look at the VLOOKUP function. Here I am in this cell, and the VLOOKUP is going to be in this cell. You're going to have to tell the VLOOKUP to look up the name. Then once you VLOOKUP looks up to the name, you're going to have to tell VLOOKUP where the table is. We'll highlight the whole table. Then the VLOOKUP on its own, remembering Kyle, will race through the first column when it finds a match. You will then have to tell VLOOKUP which one of these columns has the thing you want to go and get and bring back to the cell. Is it one or two? In our case, it's two because region's in the second column. Then VLOOKUP will automatically take the east, bring it back over here, and enter it. So let's try it all together. Delete equals VL. Now the V is for vertical because this table is orientated vertically, meaning we're looking something up vertically. I'm going to hit Tab. Now read the arguments. They will help you. Just like you would have to look something up with your own eyeballs, VLOOKUP, you need to tell it where's the lookup value. That's a relative cell reference, one, two to my left, the actual sales rep name. Now you type a comma to get to the next argument. Just like you, if you were doing this at your desk manually, you'd look at the piece of paper, which is the table. Well, you have to tell VLOOKUP where the table is. And I always remember this argument because it has the word table. Do not highlight the field names. This is a little bit different than like pivot tables because VLOOKUP is only going to look through the first column here and then return something from the second column. Now that needs to be locked because we're going to copy it down. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. Now comma, column index number. You have to tell VLOOKUP where is it in this table, the first column or the second column that has the thing you want to go get and bring back to the cell. One, two. Now this is a small table. Lots of times you have many columns. You might be getting something from the fifth or sixth column. But here you just type in two. Remember, you're telling VLOOKUP, 
column two has the thing you want to go and get. Remember, it's going to match Rachel Gomez. But once it knows it's this row, it needs to know to go to the second column. And then finally, comma. We have two options. In our example, we're doing exact match because we want to find exactly the characters R A C H E L space G O M E Z. If we were doing taxes or commission rates, we would do approximate match. But we're going to double click. This is an example where the argument is polite. It's giving you these two options and then double click. Close parentheses. Control Enter, double click and send it down. That is amazing. We just from a key table or a lookup table, or sometimes they're called dimension tables, we just automatically added a whole new field. Now our boss is going to be happy because we can build our cross tab based on revenue and region. Now I'm going to jump down to the bottom, Control Down Arrow, and F2 to check it out. Did it get it right? It's looking at Beth Tucker, the last record in the last row. It's got the lock table. That is amazing. Escape, Control, Up Arrow. Now let's build our frequency distribution or cross tab. I click in a single cell, Insert, Pivot Table, or Alt NV. Now I want to send it to a new sheet, so I could click OK, or I can hit Enter. Immediately name this sheet. I'm going to call it Revenue Region Cross Tab and Enter. Here's our field list. I drag Revenue down to Rows. Right click to Group. I'm going to start at 0. This is the judgment art side of statistics. Hey, but this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to give it an upper limit of 100. And I'm going to accept the by or increment or class width of 100. Click OK. Those are ambiguous, so we highlight. Remember the 100 and the 100? I don't know where the 100 goes, but we talked about this in earlier videos. It goes only for the bottom. So the lower limit is included, but not the upper. So I'm going to go up to Home. Editing group, find and select, replace or control H. I'm going to find a dash, tab, space, up, space, two, space, and replace all. Seven replacements, click OK, click close. Now we're going to drag region down to columns. And it doesn't matter which one you drag, I'm going to drag region, and there we go. Go up to design. Report layout, show an outline form. And there's our beautiful three in one. Remember, cross tab. Here's the cross tab. Here's the frequencies for the revenue categories. Here's the frequencies for the regions. Now, let's go back over to our sheet VLOOKUP. And we want to do a second example. I'm going to use my scroll bar and scroll over. Oh, here's the common situation. We have a table. And when we downloaded this from our database, it gave us the discount and the units. But we don't have the price we need for revenue. Here's all the products. And here's our key table, or lookup table, or dimension table. All the products and the prices. Looks like a perfect job for VLOOKUP. I don't want to do this manually. I don't want to say doublers, race through the first column. Find the doublers, get the 79.95, and type it in here. So what do I do? Equals VL, V is for vertical, lookup. Lookup value, I'm looking up the doubler name, a relative cell reference, 1, 2, 3 to my left. Comma, I see the word table. I need to tell VLOOKUP where the table is. Not including the field names, just the first column with the product name and the second column with the price. Lock it with the F4 key. Comma. This is another small table where it has just one and two columns. The second column has the thing we want to go and get and bring back to the cell. I better tell VLOOKUP that in the column index by typing a 2. Comma. I'm looking up a word, so I'm doing exact match. Double click, close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Immediately use Control down arrow to come to the bottom. Notice that this data set here is much bigger than our first one we did. This has got 10,000 records. The first one had about 200. F2, 
There it is. VLOOKUP is looking one, two, three cells to my left at the product name. It's got the right table. Escape, up arrow, and now we got to do revenue. And we're going to build our formula. Equals price times units times, and this is revenue discount. If we got a 3% discount, then what's the total amount for the revenue? 97%. Open parentheses, 1 minus the revenue discount, which is 1, 2, 3 cells to my left. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. We're not going to worry about the rounding here. I'm going to just number format it to display two decimals. Home, drop down, currency. Now the boss just wants to see frequency distribution. Based on revenue, click in a single cell. It doesn't matter which cell. Insert, pivot table, or Alt-NV. I want to put it on a new sheet, so I click OK or hit Enter. I'm going to drag revenue down to rows. Right click, group. We're going to start at 0, tab, tab. Go to 2,000. Tab, and we're going to do increments of 250. Click OK. Look at that, just like that. I'm going to drag revenue down to values. Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to expand this a little bit. Right click, group, and I'm going to try categories of 100. Click OK. Still, look at that. Almost all the transactions boom out of 10,000. Almost 8,000 of them are in the one, 0 to 100. Look at that, just in terms of analysis, how easy it was to right click, change the grouping, change the increment or the class width. You know, if we think back to the formula version we did, that would be much more difficult. Pivot tables really give us some amazing analytical tools. Now I'm going to type revenue category and enter. All right, I better name this sheet here. Revenue second table, frequency distribution, and Enter. All right, so in this video, we saw the ever important VLOOKUP functions when we have a lookup table and we need to add some new data to our data set, a new field. We saw how we could do it with looking up a price. We also saw how we could use VLOOKUP to add an extra region column. All right, that's it for Chapter 2. You have to go to your textbook now. Do the homework as listed in the syllabus. You open up a brand new Excel workbook and practice that homework. And then we'll see you next chapter, Chapter 3, for Descriptive Statistics, Numerical Measures. All right, we'll see you next video.